Divine Metaphysics. More than 60 years ago, the first book on divine metaphysics with application to healing human problems was written by Mary Baker Eddy. This book, Science and Health, is our textbook on the subject of divine metaphysics. Many students of Christian science are having good results from the intelligent application of divine metaphysics to their daily problems. And these students are giving this science its rightful place in their thinking. Divine metaphysics is the way. Divine metaphysics is the understanding and the practical application of the mental conceptions relations, laws, and rules set forth in science and health, by means of which the human mind reaches the altitude of absolute divine science. If Mrs. Eddy had given us only the revelation of absolute divine science, and had not given us divine metaphysics, we would be very much like a young student of music who attempts to perform a difficult selection without having acquired the understanding and practical use of the laws and rules governing the science of music. We all know that in order to become a musician, it is necessary to individualize music. That is, Our thought must actively and consciously be the laws and rules of the science of music. Likewise, it is only through the understanding and practice of the laws and rules of divine metaphysics as set out in our textbook that our human thought becomes spiritualized. This spiritualization of thought constitutes our ascending footsteps up to where we reach divine science, through which spiritual healing is possible. The practice of divine metaphysics is the mental discipline or thought control exercised by the student, which is preparatory to his being the action of spirit or divine mind. Mrs. Eddy says, The utterance of truth is designed to rebuke and destroy error. Science and Health, page 233. And many of us find it takes the most rigid mental discipline and thought control to continually apply this truth and obey the rules of divine metaphysics. For instance, are we obedient to the rule that requires us to counterfact every disease and every inharmony? Do we always turn from the lie of false belief to truth? Do we insist vehemently on the great fact which covers the whole ground, that God is all? Do we keep in mind the verity of being, Do we remember that man's perfection is real and unimpeachable? Science and Health, page 233, 421, and 414. There is only one way to arrive at divine science. All Christian science students reach this spiritual plane of consciousness through the mental discipline and thought control which is provided by divine metaphysics. Metaphysical science is a study of divine life, truth, and love, which must be wrought out in life practice. Science and Health, page 202. Wrought out in daily experience of good. If we desire healings and blessings from this science, we must be willing to follow and live its rules and laws. There is no longer any mystery attached to the healing of divine metaphysics. If we wish to be well through mind alone, 
or desire our affairs to be harmonious, then we must pay the price of obedience to divine metaphysics. We must know the truth. We must live the truth. We must love the truth. We must be the truth actively and consciously. We must gain an understanding and apply this understanding to our individual needs. This is the sure and perfect way in metaphysical science. Mrs. Eddy says, quote, Divine metaphysics is that which treats of the existence of God, his essence, relations, and attributes. End quote. She also says, quote, Christian science is the unfolding of true metaphysics, that is, of mind, or God, and his attributes. End quote. Miscellaneous Writings, page 69. Semi-Metaphysics Since the publication of Science and Health, Presenting Divine Metaphysics, there have come to public notice many authors who have written books on metaphysics. But these books are all semi-metaphysical because they are not based wholly on truth or divine mind. Mrs. Eddy says, quote, Semi-metaphysical systems afford no substantial aid to scientific metaphysics, for their arguments are based on the false testimony of the material senses, as well as on the facts of mind. End quote. Science and Health, page 268. Quote, these semi-metaphysical systems are one and all pantheistic and savor of pandemonium, a house divided against itself. End quote. Semi-metaphysics is sweeping over the world today. There are thousands and thousands of persons who are becoming interested in semi-metaphysics. This is because everyone is becoming aware, more or less, that so-called material things are mental things, or mortal thoughts. Semi-metaphysics is a step that must necessarily precede the universal acceptance of divine metaphysics. Mrs. Eddy says, quote, we welcome the increase of knowledge and the end of error, because even human invention must have its day, and we want that day to be succeeded by Christian science, by divine reality. End quote. Science and Health, page 95. So we rejoice in this day in which the world is taking its first step in the recognition that all things and conditions are mental. But just to transpose a so-called material thing into a mortally mental thing does not get anyone very far out of the woods. And students of Christian science need to watch not to come under the mesmeric influence of the many cults which are urging semi-metaphysics upon the public today. These semi-metaphysicians argue that their systems of metaphysics are clearer and easier to apply than Christian science. And it may be true that it is easier for mortal mind to understand the contents of its own mind than it is to understand and apply divine metaphysics. Mrs. Eddy says, quote, We are in the midst of a revolution. Physics are yielding slowly to metaphysics. Mortal mind rebels at its own boundaries. Weary of matter, it would catch the meaning of spirit. End quote. Christian Healing, page 11. Since this is true, 
we can readily understand why many individuals are saying that a knowledge of philosophy and of medicine and a knowledge of so-called metaphysics is an aid to divine metaphysics. And these same individuals call the attention of Christian scientists to the fact that none of these things are found in the practice of divine metaphysics. All these semi-metaphysical systems presuppose man, who is immortal in spiritual understanding, to be mortal in material belief. Science and Health, page 194. Practically all of these semi-metaphysical systems set forth the theory of reincarnation. This theory is taking a strong hold on the people who are not instructed in divine metaphysics. Reincarnation means the rebirth of a soul in another human body. Reincarnation is not only the belief in a separation of the body from the mind or soul through death, but is the belief that the soul at some later time is reborn in another body through the atom process of generation. Death is not a reincarnation, since there is no separation of soul and body there can be no reincarnation. The human consciousness is not in the human body, but includes the human body within itself as one of its material concepts. Through divine metaphysics, we have learned that consciousness forms a newer and better concept of body as it itself becomes a newer and better thought activity. Mrs. Eddy teaches us through divine metaphysics that when we fully understand the eternal oneness of divine mind and body, we shall overcome all beliefs in sin, sickness, and death. And we do this through the understanding of the fact of divine mind and body present here and now, as what appears to us to be our human mind and body. Besides the many semi-metaphysical books on the market today, there are books written by Christian scientists who believe that their interpretation of truth is a clearer presentation of truth than the interpretation of truth presented in Science and Health by Mary Baker Eddy. If I were under a claim and had not received my health, I would study science and health through. And then if I were not healed, I would study it through again. And then if I were not healed, I would study it through again. And I would keep on studying the truth as presented in science and health until my thought gave forth the concrete evidence of truth. Why would I do this? Because science and health, with key to the scriptures, is the word of God. And from the scriptures we read, quote, He sent his word and healed them, and delivered them from their destructions. End quote. Psalm 107. Science and health is divine mind, your mind, expressed. And divine mind is its own interpreter. Science and Health, page 577. Many of these books set forth absolute truth, and this is quite all right. But they neglect to set forth the necessity of taking the human footsteps whereby we spiritualize our thought. But the student of Christian science, as yet, needs to understand the necessity of spiritualizing his thought through the process of right thinking, up to where his thought is the truth. It is no more profitable to recognize absolute truth without progressively spiritualizing our thought 
than it is to recognize higher mathematics without progressively mathematicizing our thought. So, we as students of Christian science should be awake to the necessity of taking the required human footsteps of healing and overcoming in our individual thinking and in all the activities of our movement until we fulfill them in their reality. In this hour of change in belief, from a material to a spiritual basis, let us be awake to the necessity of understanding and practicing divine metaphysics as presented in our textbook, Science and Health, with Key to the Scriptures. We do not just happen to have Christian science, any more that we just happen to have the science of mathematics or the science of music. Christian science could not be any other way than it is, any more than the science of mathematics and the science of music can be other than they are. Basically, the science of mathematics and music are absolute, unalterable truth, and they include the way or the laws and rules by which the human mind can attain the altitude of these sciences. Likewise, Christian science is absolute, unalterable, impersonal truth, and it includes divine metaphysics, or the way whereby the human mind, through intelligent application of its laws and rules, can attain absolute truth or divine science. But if we fail to regard science and health with key to the scriptures as the word of God or the way, we are apt to be led into thinking that these other works on metaphysics contain something of value that is not found in science and health. Science and health with key to the scriptures is the full and final revelation of God, or mind, and reveals to the human mind the allness of God and the consequent nothingness of evil, materiality, discord, and death. We said in the preceding paper that Christian science originated in the first chapter of Genesis and has been on its way until, in this present age, divine science is revealed in its fullness and completeness as science and health with key to the scriptures. And we, as students of this science, should recognize and evaluate this impersonal Christ in our midst. In speaking of these last days, Jesus said, quote, If any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. End quote. Matthew 24. Our need today is not more revelation of truth, but a more consistent and better demonstration of divine principle and its laws of life and harmony.